So I'll come into a little bit of challenges that we are thinking a lot about in our research in this area. And one challenge we already touched about that you have, you have different stakeholders that are important when you address this problem, but they come or are based in different institutions. So one, and, and these institutions bring with themselves different ethos, if you like, different ways of balancing different values. It's like, you know, so the, the school system and the military, they have very different aims, if you think like that. So neither of those are really relevant in this area, but that illustrates that they will pursue very different values and they will trade off conflicts of values in very different ways. Uh, <clears throat> So one thing is then that you have, on the one hand, the classic role, the clinical ethics of an ordinary doctor that thinks about his or her patients, the individuals, and their health. Uh, and then you have the more overarching public health structure, especially if you expand it to a global perspective, where you're not really thinking about any particular patient anymore. You're thinking about populations and health patterns in populations and how you would like to improve them or to prevent that you have uh, a worse developments in the future. And so the doctor has this focus on that people come to a doctor with a problem and the doctor is supposed to fix the problem. This is like when you have a, you know, something's broken and you call up the plumber or the electrician or something like that. It's a kind of a reparation perspective that you work with. The public health and the global public health perspective works with this primary prevention perspective. Rather than sort of fixing the pipe when it's broken, you want to make a system where no pipes break or as few pipes break as possible. And there's a huge conflict here. And I think the examples we had about infectious disease illustrates this, right? So it might actually be that in order to contain the infection, you harm the individual patient. Or in order to map the spread of resistant bacteria and genes in the hospital, you induce people not to visit you when they have a health problem because they are afraid of the consequences if they are ranked as high risk. So, and there are different, depending on what perspective you take. And of course, both of these stakeholder perspectives have to be part of the solution. You can't take them out. Both have to be present. And how do you solve this tension? Another example is, of course, how you think about business ethics uh, versus this global public health thing. And that's relevant when you look at the stakeholders in the pharma industry, of course, but also in the farming. So farming is mostly a commercial activity uh, that goes on with the profit motive. So if you come from a business perspective, it's not really public health that is the aim that you aiming for. You're aiming for making money, and so the price and the costs and the market shares and so on is in focus. And if you're an executive in a business, if you're a CEO, for instance, in, in a public company, you are obligated by law to do what's best for the shareholders. You can't really choose to do anything else. So you're governed by what the board told you is the target this year or the next five years or something. And usually it will have to do with money and not public health. So this, for example, so if the board decides that, well, hey, this about, you know, getting new antibiotics is not, doesn't really seem to make so much money, let's make skin cream instead. This is what you are obligated to do. Uh, and, and the whole institution of business rests on this obligation. So how should you think about that if you're in a situation where if all the companies start to make skin creams to make money in the short run, at the end of the day, in the long run, there will be no healthcare system worth selling drugs to anymore. 
So for instance. And then you have, of course, different kind of institutional ethical communities. So we already seen a little bit about this. So for example, the clinical perspective and the research perspective are already mentioned. But also, so we have one uh, agency in Sweden, for instance, that's, that's tasked with seeing to it that uh, procurement buying drugs by the Swedish health system is as cost effective as possible. And this, but this, as we have seen in other parts of this course, this system at the same time means that they're letting drug producers are not handling the environmental problem, for instance, off the hook. And they are even rewarded in this system because they can offer cheaper products because of this, that are from a healthcare perspective just as good as the other drug, but from an environmental perspective they're worse. So that agency will think about this problem in a very different way than, for example, an environmental health scientist who's worried about antibiotic resistance and emissions from factories, for instance, like Joachim Larsson who visited the course before. So the, the stakeholder perspective means that you're thinking about the problem and the stakes in a very, very different ways. Another thing is we live now in a globalized world, but at the, and we really like to travel and, and so on and so forth. But at the same time, when we travel, with us travel the multi-resistant germs and the genes that can transfer to other germs and so on. We are very concretely contributing to the problem. And this can be seen also in other areas. So if I go, for example, from Sweden, I go on a holiday to uh, another country where everything is much cheaper and it's very exotic and so on, very likely is that several things that I could carry with me, which is trivial for me, because I can enjoy the Swedish healthcare system, will be a life-threatening thing for people who live there. Just an ordinary, mild influenza. And that can have to do with the socioeconomic factors, but also, for example, in variations in what different populations are accustomed to in that way. So you have a tension here between the way we want an open and globalized world, but the same open and globalized world also contribute to the transmission of resistant infection and resistant bacteria and resistant genes between the bacteria. And that brings into the next thing, because as I think being clear already, so if we're going to act on this problem, it's not only Sweden, it's not only Northern Europe, it's not only Europe, it's not only the high income part of the world, it's the entire world that actually needs to act together. And we need to be able to distribute the tasks and to distribute the pros and the cons. Uh, what you get by solving the problem, but also the burdens you need to take on in order to solve the problem. And this creates collective action problems. We already see them uh, on a high level in, for example, climate policy. And you have similar problems here. And I